good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You are looking at a freshly showered and dressed Mark Josephson, founder of Cast Iron. Welcome to Cast Iron Bites. I am delighted for our guest today, and I'm going to do my best to get the name pronunciation correct. It's not that hard, but I'm up in my head on it already, Aurelia. Aurelia it Lembrecht. Is hard. Aurelia Lembrecht. There's a ch in there, Lembrecht. Uh, I want to say it like French, Lembrecht. Um, and there we go. Some are, we? Uh, and Aurelia joins us from South Africa, which I'm very excited um, about. And Aurelia, you can find at philosophyofyum.com. Aurelia is, I love your, I love how you introduce yourself on your website. I'm going to read it, but then I want the real story, which is sure. I help home bakers create a home bakery business with consistent orders so they never have to worry about a stable income. And Gosh, that's there's so much in there. So Aurelia, welcome to Cast Iron Bites. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Mark. I'm so excited to be here. So tell tell us um, how you got into helping home bakers build businesses. Why is that something? How did you end up doing this? Oh goodness! Well, I studied architecture, and I was very unhappy in my job, very stressed out. Desk jobs, home bakers know if you're a creative person at a desk job, it's exhausting and then I started baking after hours just to keep myself sane it's kind of cheap therapy which you will also hear homemakers say all the time and then that started developing very quickly into uh, a business yes so I started baking for Friday evenings that went over into baking for weekends and then at one point I realized I have to make a decision here because I was suffering from severe anxiety because of my job and I had to start me taking medication but on the other hand, I loved baking and this, I realized it's more, it's easier for me to stay awake until 1 a.m. icing cupcakes than to just work till 5 p.m. at my desk job. So something, something's wrong here. And I decided we, yes, we got married, my husband and I, and then we decided to move down to Cape Town because lots of family was here. It's a very creative city. So if there was one place in South Africa where it could work, it would be here, you know. Um, and I just entertained the idea of creating a home baking business, you know, why not? And I decided to give it six months. And if it didn't work out, that's fine. Then I'll go back to architecture. And then I um, kind of realized, you know, if, if I want to make it happen as quickly as possible, I need to get wholesale clients. Mm. Uh, I need to bake for coffee shops and restaurants and so forth. So mm. through trial and error, I figured that out. And then I started building up a direct client base as well. And then, you know, before I knew it, but within three months, I was making more than my salary that I did at the architecture three months. job. Within three, three months. months. Okay, so you're a bit of a superstar yep. at this. No, no, I'm very stubborn, you see. I'm very okay. stubborn and I would wrestle with things often and I, I, I'm determined to figure something out. If I set my mind to something, then I cry and I protest because it's suffering and it's hard to learn new skills and learn new things, but it was worth it. Mm. And I still made loads of mistakes in the years after that because I didn't have any training whatsoever in business, marketing, sales, all of that stuff. I could just bake yummy things. And the other things I just had to learn, like, <laughs> like anyone else, bootstrapping all the way. Um, lots of books. My husband is a crazy bookworm, so he would often find these books and recommend them to me and I would tell them no tell him no I'm fine I don't like reading it's boring and then eventually I became desperate enough you know to to read because I didn't want to go back to architecture so is there a book that yes. you read that was really particularly helpful to you was there a book oh, that was particularly helpful so many I actually have a blog post about like the seven books that every okay. home bakery business owner needs to read yes so okay. great um, the one of the major ones, I think the first one that started opening my eyes to how to understand marketing properly was the $100 Startup by Chris Gillibo. I don't know if you know that one. You will enjoy it, actually. It's fantastic. What is, what, give, give us a nugget that you remember from that. Okay. So in that book, I learned that you don't need to be a trust fund baby to start a business. Don't, it's, it's because it's the $100 startup, right? It's a very, like a relatively small amount of money. $100, it's not a million dollars or $10,000. So um, he basically just helps you to understand 
start understanding how your customers think to sell an experience and not just your products mm. to understand how people perceive products um they don't just well if you are just going to say here's a here's a cupcake it's tasty you know that will only get you so far you need to tap into understanding their emotions understanding how they think so that your products become more essential to them so they understand how it can enrich their lives mm -hmm. and not just fill their stomachs be, fill their stomachs right so um really I, I really i read your your little intro because it's got a couple of very interesting pieces in it yeah and you and it's different than uh, other coaches and other folks we've talked to because it's bit it's a bit more specific on either side of it which i really like so on one side there's consistent orders and on the other side is well three pieces worry and then stable stable income so maybe break down for for us a bit about what it means to have consistent orders or why you call that out like that sounds different then I'm sure everyone wants it, but nobody else says that. Yes, consistent orders. I mean, everyone knows you can't really leave your day job unless you have an income that you can depend on, a reliable income. Consistent orders are everything in a home bakery business because without it, you can't plan ahead. You can't plan your life. You don't know if you're going to get an income. And often bakers will have to resort to methods like promotions or sales to get people to buy their stuff, but then it just creates like that famine, um, uh, uh, the feast and famine cycle, yes. where you suddenly get this influx of income. You suddenly make lots of money in this week, but then next week, no one orders again. And the week after that, no one orders, or maybe like one or two people. So that's why consistent orders are um, is everything. And I've spent a lot of years now chatting to home bakers, especially ones who have already got a business, and what frustrates them and most of the time the thing that keeps up keeps coming up all the time is um, consistent orders recurring orders how do I get those and that is the like the thing I'm passionate about teaching <laughs> home bakers how to create uh, a business that has consistent orders so they have an income that they can rely on and plan around Awesome. So I'll remind everybody that uh, Aurelia's website is philosophyofyum.com and you have a free masterclass there on how to yep. do this. Actually, I'm not sure you give it all yes. away for free, but I'm sure there's other wonderful things, but you can also work directly um, with Aurelia as well. Correct? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, the free masterclass basically teaches you the system that I teach my students like an outline so that you know what you're supposed to be focusing on. Because everyone knows by now, you know, years ago, 10, more like 20 years ago, business cards and free samples could get you somewhere. Not anymore. Mm. It's not enough. It's not enough. Because there are so many baking businesses out there. You need to change your angle and change your approach. Um, and that is what proper marketing is all about. You know, right. understanding how your customers think and what makes them buy. Mm. Is there a key mistake that you see home bakers making? that like, every, yes. like you're like oh I see this all the time what is it well there's a list of like 50 yeah. I made all of them okay so right. no judgment but I think one of the main things is people well there's like a little caveat am I allowed to do like a mistake with a little side leg <laughs> to of course. that of course. okay so the, the one of the big mistakes um home bakers often see themselves as a baker and not a business owner. That is such a huge mistake because they they think the reason their business is struggling is because their baked goods aren't good enough or because they aren't fancy enough or because they haven't studied to be a chef or to uh, or to do some kind of pastry direction or whatever. They just don't have those qualifications. So they assume that is why their business is struggling. So they keep trying to find the best recipes. They think they need a kitchen aid and they need this fancy, beautiful kitchen, this magazine kitchen, Instagram kitchen to be and a successful home baker. But it's not on the baking side. The baking side is probably not the reason why your business is failing. I, I believe firmly and have seen in my own business and in other and in my students as well, that 70 percent of your success in a home bakery business depends on your business skills. And only 30% depends on great baking. That's why all these commercial bakeries with like meh kind of baking, they still make a great income because they understand 
that 70% business strategy. And, you know, they see themselves as a business primarily. So, and then the little side leg. The business side of things, if you want to reach customers, if you want to reach more customers and get consistent orders, then, oh, mom brain, don't don't kick oh. in now. So I, I have a baby, you see, he's yes. nine months old. And all the mothers here will understand mom brain hits you at the worst moments. And it then does. you just like have this blank. And this no is not problem. the ideal time for that. Let me ask you a different question. We can come back to the side link because we're all, we're all friends and family here. Oh, I remembered. I remembered. Oh, go, let's do it. Praise the Lord, I remembered. Okay, so with marketing, marketing, you need to stop seeing it as a, as like, what is that one magic sentence I can say to get orders? Business is like relationships. And marketing, obviously, is also then like relationships. The way you get a lasting relationship with recurring love is not with a one, with a pickup line. <laughs> you know, if you, if you want to have a lasting relationship with someone, you don't just give them one smooth pickup line and then you have and then you get married and everything's wonderful. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. So marketing is about understanding your customers. It's about understanding how they think, what words they use to express themselves, what problems they have and how you can help solve those problems for them. Um, that is what it's all about. So, mm -hmm. yes, try not to hope for this magic one sentence that you are missing in your business and then your marketing is sorted you need to devote yourself to learning about marketing it's not boring i promise it's no. so interesting because you're just going to learn more about um about how people think and yeah. how they how to communicate effectively with them and that is a, a skill that you will carry with you for the rest of your life and i promise it's so interesting so interesting i mean aurelia i'm gonna go to philosophy of yum.com <clears throat> get your free master class and sign up to work with you and all of our listeners should as well um awesome. let me ask you this uh home bakery business with consistent orders so they never have to worry you shared that you had anxiety and you know welcome to the club mm -hmm. um oh. talk talk to me a little bit about worry and why you said you include worry in your description because that's a, a that's a choice that you made to mm, put that word in there. why it's did you very include, intentional tell me more okay so as i've said earlier i've spent a lot of like many years now chatting to home bakers uh when i had my own successful home bakery i didn't plan to start a blog and to talk about the business side of things people just started asking me over time and then I started sharing more about that, especially on Instagram. And then I started this thing called Home Bakery Day, where people got to ask whatever home bakery business questions they have. And it came up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, just how people are worried about if this is a viable business idea, because often they may have thought like, maybe I can sell my baking from home. But then immediately the worry sets in because we lack confidence mostly, home bakers, we are typically people who um, just do this as a hobby. So you don't take your gift ser seriously and you kind of look down upon the talents that you have mm. because it's not something fancy. <laughs> it's just, it feels like, well, anyone can vote. But no, it's not true. Um, it's, it's a very special thing to be able to bake something that is delicious to the point that it moves people mm -hmm. and brightens up their day and brings them comfort and joy. But yes, let me get back to the worry. Sorry, I get carried away. No, I, I'm, I'm with you. Things. It's a, it, you know, the, one of the reasons why I love my job is because it's tied. We help put really talented artisans connected to really hungry people and magical mm -hmm. moments happen in those moments and yes. it's those moments of joy and um that's really special and you're right um it's i hear a lot from our customers and in our community about um imposter syndrome why would anyone buy anything from me or how yes. you know how I'm, I'm not a business person what do i know and i don't have mm. a who's going to buy from me and they it's a, it's very real it's not just bakers by the way i think it's a it's a pretty common yes. common fear um, yes. what is, um, you talked about a mistake that folks make, what about uh -huh. something? Is there like a, like an aha moment for your, your clients or something where you give them a piece of advice and they go, Ooh, that's the best new, like, like, what do you, what, 
what's something that you share with your clients that really resonates with them? It's a tough question, but like there, there's probably a that moment. Is, that is a tough one because they, there's, there's quite a lot of them. But I think the main thing is the mindset stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where I start with my course. People think to create a successful business, just give me like the juicy marketing stuff. But what they what they often don't realize, this is a, another book that you should read, Mark. Um, it's called The, the E-Myth Revisited. Uh, it's a, a bestseller. It's been around for decades. It's fantastic. The E-Myth Revisited. And E-Myth stands for Entrepreneur Myth. The, um, the author is Michael Gerber. And he said this thing that, that changed my life forever. He said... Oh. Your business will always be nothing more than a distinct reflection of who you are. If your business is to change, which it must to continually thrive, you will need to change first. Mm. If you are unwilling to change, your business will never be able to give you what you want. Yes, that's mm. a lot. And I know this by heart because I've, I've recited this so many times. It's just <laughs> so good. Basically, here's what he's saying. If you don't sort out this control center in your you know your mind is making all the decisions in your business if you don't sort that out all of your insecurities all of your fears all of that is going to come out in all of your business decisions and that that is where successful business begins is with your mindset because you use yeah. the same brain to make all your yeah. business decisions if you neglect that then nothing is going to stick it's not going to, you're going to try to leave blue in the face. It's not going to, it's just not going to work out for you or you, or it will, but it will take so much longer and it will be such an uphill battle all the way because the mindsets that you have, the false mindsets you have about life, about yourself, um, all of those things, you, it's like you are hiking and you're carrying those around in a backpack mm. and there are these giant rocks yeah. and you carry them with you all the way. Yeah. So yes, you will, you might get there. But it's going to be tremendously exhausting. And that's why most people give up, you know, why they don't reach that success that they've been dreaming of, because it just becomes so hard. Um, so if you sort out your mindset around life, around business, around yourself, then you make healthy business decisions hmm. and not, you know, emotional ones where you try to validate your worth all the time. Yeah. And then, yes, the journey, the new take off that backpack with all of those rocks and then you can just go for it and you become successful so much faster. Aurelia, so I, I, they, business minds. Yeah. They so absolutely important. don't teach this in architecture school. Um, no, no, for <laughs> sure. So we are, um, uh, we're coming to the end and I have three questions that I ask everybody. Um, and you sort of maybe answered one already, but I'll give you another chance to add something to it. So this is rapid sure. fire, no stress, no wrong answer. Um, Aurelia, what's the best meal you ever had? Oh wow! Um, it was we for my for my one year anniversary. We went to this amazing restaurant, and they have tapas. It was insanely expensive, mm. but it was phenomenal and worth every cent. We like cleaned out our bank at night, <laughs> but it was worth it. It was it so was, good. And it's worth celebrating those special moments for sure. Um, yes. All right. The second question is. What's the best piece of advice somebody has given you and who was it from? And I was thinking about your quote from the book, but what's some advice that somebody's given you that you really remember? Um, that it's okay to be scared, do it mm -hmm. anyway. Yes. Fear is not a sign that you shouldn't do something. It's just a sign that you're human. That's mm. all. Who shared that advice with you? Do you remember? Um, yes, I think, I think it was, um, Mel Robbins shared something to that effect. Yep. She's amazing. I'm sure yep. you know who Mel Robbins is. Yeah. Um, but yes, she basically just, um, spoke about don't wait to feel like doing something. And then it, there was also bits of Marie Forleo talking about fear. And then this kind of came, came out. Yeah. Uh, like, yes. Fear and anxiety are, are very, are tied together. Right. And it's our bodies I and see. our brains recognizing that something is different and something might make us uncomfortable and we need to react to it. Yes. How we choose to react to it though is, you know, we can cower, we can fight, we can flee, we can, you know, 
process it and make rational decisions. I love the way that you think about mindset. Okay, the last question for you, Aurelia, is who inspires you? Who's somebody that we might want to talk to on this series that inspires you? That inspires me. Wow. Um, there are lots of online entrepreneurs who inspire me, not necessarily bakers, yeah. um, but a baker who inspires me a lot is, yes, you should chat to her. Butternut Bakery is her her handle on Instagram. That's Jenna, Jenna Barnard is her name. And we have, we, we became friends on Instagram. Um, she started a baking blog. She was still working in marketing then. But we, I like started following her when she had a thousand followers and we hit 2000 followers on the same day. Wow. Okay. In the meantime, she's grown this incredible, incredible baking blog. If you haven't checked out her recipes or know about it, you have to. And this week she hits a million followers on Instagram. Oh so it's been surreal just seeing her journey from like 2017, 2018, um, where, you know, uh, we had 2000 followers on the same day. And now she's just completely skyrocketed and it, she's just completely found herself as a baker. And that inspires me a lot. She's just herself. She doesn't try to make recipes or invent recipes like other bakers. She just does her thing now. In the beginning, she would like adjust her style, you know, to fit in with what's trending or what's popular. But she's just given herself creative freedom. And that's really inspiring. Thank you for sharing. Aurelia, thank you so much. This is, I, I chased you for a while to get you. You Thank you for being um, so flexible. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, Hashtag no, I, mom life. <laughs> yeah, I know you have a lot of like you have a you have a life. So thank you for giving this to our community and your time. Um, I encourage everybody to check out Aurelia's um, website at philosophyofyum.com and grab the free masterclass. You can follow her on all the socials, I'm sure. Um, and I can't thank you enough, Aurelia. It's such a pleasure. Thanks for our conversation. I had fun. No, great. Thank you so much. Thank you.